Hi there and welcome back to Japan and most importantly to my new digs. That's right, no more hiding in a dark internet cafe booth trying to record reaction videos. I'm actually in a room with light. You can see my face for better or worse. Anyway, today is marking a little bit of a thing that I'm doing because I said a while ago, uh, well not that long ago, that I wanted to try and build up a mental list of what my top five songs were by both baby metal and band made. But as I was thinking about doing that video, I realized that I only really heard about 10 or 12 songs by both bands. So I thought what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cram up and hear more of their material. So today I'm jumping in with a song by baby metal that I don't think anyone's really suggested. It's one of those ones where I think it's an older one that um, maybe isn't so much with one for the hardcore fans, but I'm gonna check it out anyway because the thumbnail looked really interesting for the video. Uh, this song is called Ine, which is basically good. So it sounds kind of more akin to their older material as well. So anyway, here we go. This is Ine. Let's see. Is it good? Pro probably, but yeah. I've liked most of what I've heard so far. Yeah, here we go. Back when they really had to announce who they were. going back to that more basic form of the combination of the two things that they got the pop and the metal they're being much more pop even the video looks very pop but that growling stuff which is not obviously not delivered by them I guess that's put in there as well to add to it which I'm glad they don't seem to do that anymore Okay, what's going on? This I did not expect. I like the guitar bit actually, that's really cool. And nice, oh. This is both simultaneously one of the most pop things I've ever heard by them and one of the most metal things I've heard by them. They really are taking the uh, combination of things to a very extreme level here, which is good, it's good. And yeah, that really heavy synth stuff as well. They're embracing the pop as much as anything else. Back to the pop. This 
this video crowd, you, I think they're really enjoying this. This must have been a weird thing to be there for, but they look like they're really enjoying that. All right. I mean, it seems even when I listen to, well, actually, probably even more so when I listen to their old stuff, there's a lot of surprises and things that, you know, things that I, I don't remember from the little bit I'd heard of them when they first started. Um, and this is one of the things I like about hearing them. One of the reasons why I think there's mileage in listening to more of their music anyway. Um, and because one of the reasons why me making a, a list of my preferred ones is more difficult until I've heard more is because they really do seem to have some really interesting uh, things in there. I mean, with a lot of the other bands that you listen to, the idea of mixing uh, pop and metal, which is a very popular one in Japan at the moment, it, it, it kind of comes down to a very simple formula. And yet, I think one of the reasons why they've managed to be so creative and create so many new things is because of the fact that they do mess with that formula. They don't always do it the same. I think now they're just more messing with what can you do with metal. But at the time, it was... Um, you know, the, the pop inf when the pop influences were heavier at the beginning, there was a sort of cheesiness to it. And I think they were going more for impact than, you know, well, equally for impact in a good song, maybe. Whereas now they're more just concentrating on making good songs for the more hardcore fans who are more metalers now, I think. Um, <laughs> but that, that was really nice. And I like the fact there was a surprise in there. The reason why that one was particularly interesting to me is because, okay, Again, we've heard this with a couple of the older songs. You've got the more synth-heavy thing, more concentration on a pop chorus, more of a sort of a pop feel to it. But I did notice that they really, that the way they weaved everything in and out of that was really nice. I mean, like the the drum, the drums I liked that because there was the double kick, but the double kick was kind of rhythmic. It wasn't just like one of those things where it's just going, which can be kind of a bit too much unless it's in a, a good way um that's the sort of thing where that's one of the examples where metal can sort of slip into being less musical and more just noise for the sake of noise i think a double kick like a real rapid double kick has to be used very cleverly to be of value here it was used nicely it was just sort of little double taps in the rhythm so it kept rhythmic and heavy at the same time the guitar break um I think this is one of the songs, just from what I've heard from you guys' comments, this would be one of the songs before they actually had the band who have been kind of with them for the majority of, the, uh, of their career now. Um, but the guitar break, I really like the guitar bridge here. I like the way that worked. The heavy bit was really good. Um, but the heavy bit, of course, came right after something that we need to discuss, which is that hip-hop break. I thought that was really charming. Okay, it had pretty much no value as hip-hop. In the same way that I don't think anyone would take their clothes that they were wearing seriously, I think it was just obviously hip hop parody. I even noticed the, uh, I don't know which one it was, but the girl who was on the left of the, uh, sorry, on the right of the screen, I noticed that she was looking at the, the lead singer, Sue. She was looking at her kind of like, what do we do? What do we do? She looked really kind of uncomfortable with what they were doing. Like, you know, someone had just said, this is a thing, we're parodying this thing. You know, I, I suspect she has no real knowledge of late 80s and early 90s hip hop culture. What a crime. But <laughs> yeah, that, that, I, I enjoyed that. I thought it was a really nice little thing. And again, it showed this fact that there was a willingness to experiment. I do think sometimes when you're doing metal, as they have now sort of concentrated on doing metal, uh, let's be honest, metal fans as a general don't tend to be too welcoming of things outside of their um, genre. I think that a lot of people, a lot of people talk about how Baby Metal won over a lot of fans. I think one of the reasons they won over so many fans is because of the fact that um, people saw them as, okay, you're clearly not metalers, but you're trying to do metal. I think there was a thing that they appreciated that someone was coming towards what they wanted, um, what metal fans like. Um, but when you already are in the metal scenes, they are there now as an established act. I think there's kind of thing now you've proven that you're metal. Um, fans, metal fans, more as a general rather than baby metal fans, metal fans would probably be less accepting if you try to now branch away in any way. Um, that's just my general feeling. I, I worked with quite a lot of metalers before um, in my job, and I think that's a general tone that kind of comes along with it, unfortunately. Um, so it is a shame that I don't think that sort of little comedy, I mean, it just seems to be like a parody thing they threw in for the bridge. I don't see them doing that as much now. I don't think that would be something I'd expect from them, which is a shame. Um, 
I'd love to know if you guys can comment and give me some more recent examples of that kind of craziness. But like I say, we're looking at an interesting curve in their career. They're a group who started as being an ex, you know an experiment. I mean, I saw recently the Sakura Gakuin, the, the original group they came from, which was just totally straight out schoolgirl idol pop stuff. Um, so you know they've come a long way. They've gone through a lot of growth and a lot of change. And I do I, I do now appreciate and enjoy more that experimental phase they had earlier in their sort of breakout career. And, you know, I love the musicality of where they are now. I just, I hope that they still have the freedom to move between both things. So, you guys comment, as always, you know more than I do about this. So, comment and tell me if there's something I'm missing. But anyway, that's kind of all my, all my comments about that. The video was great. It was kind of a cheap video, but really fun. You know, everyone looked like they were enjoying themselves. The song was great. It had a catchy-ish pop hook, but it was nowhere near as catchy as um, some of the other ones they've had before. So, I don't think that's going to be one of those songs that would be particularly memorable, which is why probably no one's actually mentioned it, as far as I'm aware. Um, uh, so yeah, I'd probably be surprised if they played that live anymore. Again, comment and tell me. Um, but yeah, it was it was just a good, fun song. Probably doesn't stand out as one of their best, but certainly is one of their most memorable just for having that sense of adventure to it. Anyway, I've waffled enough. Uh, usual stuff, you know, liking, subscribing, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to bore you with that right now. But anyway, <laughs> you're intelligent enough. You don't need to be patronized by someone on YouTube telling you to follow them. If you want to follow, you can. But either way, whether you're following or not, if you do want to see more videos, I've got loads and there's more coming as well. So for now, from Japan and my nice bright new room, ciao, ciao.